Hey, just so you know, I'm gonna point a camera at you a little bit. Okay. I'll, don't, don't worry about me. Just do your thing. how they're feeling uh, we're gonna stop at what we call the bail trail we'll gather there and we'll see if you want to keep going in the bowl or not Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? We are here today to talk about this new updated 2023 Vocal Mantra 102. Very similar conversation to the one we had about the Kendo 88 earlier this season. Yep. Uh, basically receives the same changes. Um, I had a lot of fun kind of prepping the video for this one and reviewing some of that Sun Valley footage. Uh, and that was my kind of first introduction to this new model and pretty darn fun place to ski. Yeah, you know, we talked about like the Solomon QST 106 when we were in Alta as a nice Alta ski. I bet this would be a great Sun Valley ski because you got the mix of the open areas and, groom and yeah. long groomers. And totally. that seems to be where this thing really thrives. Yeah, totally. And like the the open terrain, the yeah. open off piece terrain really yeah. helps, which, which we can get to more when we talk about performance. Uh, but here's the ski. Bob, I set up this wall before you came in today. Are you glad that I gave you your uh, desired length over there? I am, you know, and like, to be fair, I haven't gotten on the 191 yet, but I don't think I want to. I think this 184 is plenty. Right, yeah. it's, and I think that's like very telling of the ski and, and yeah. kind of interesting, you know. I was thinking about that because I went downstairs to grab that length, and as I was bringing it upstairs, I was like, kind of thinking back to that Ranger 96 and thinking like, gosh, four centimeters isn't much longer. Like that's not that much. Right. And there's a stark difference between a ski like that and a 180 and a ski like this and a 184. Totally, yeah. And then at, at the other end, like between this and the potential of a Ranger 96 and a 187, that's only three centimeters difference. Right. And like, yeah, there's just so, so much variance in the construction of the ski. Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah. These are the things that I think about. Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we get into performance, let's take a look at construction and shape. Bob, do you want to give us a kind of walkthrough on construction? You know, I think yeah. both in, in both of these conversations, construction and shape, it's more similar than different, but there are some important changes too. Yeah, and that's an echo of our Kendo 88 discussion as well, where we're seeing, you know, the same multi-layer wood core, poplar and beech stringers. Uh, you know, basically that basis for all the Mantra Kendo skis. Uh, and then we have their tailored Titanal frame. So whereas it used to be more of a static uh, frame of metal, now they have this tailored frame. So per length, they're adjusting where the wide part of the metal goes. Uh, so it used to just be one width of metal all the way through the uh, tips and through the tails. And now they're shrinking it as you get towards the tips yep. uh, and, the t and the tails as well. So the widest parts of the metal are kind of in the middle part of the ski. So from fingers to fingers there. Uh, and then in the tips, the upgrades stay the same too. They get tailored carbon tips as well. So that kind of offsets the, the metal shrinking down in the tips. You know, replacing that metal with carbon does a couple of things. It makes that initiation just when you tip the ski, it's a little bit more stiff and precise and energetic. And then it also lowers the swing weight. So by taking that extra metal out of the front and replacing it with carbon stringers, yeah. they do a nice job of adjusting the torsional stiffness and the, and the uh, quickness of it. So really worked really well in the Kendo in the M6 last year when we got yeah. on it and filters right through to this, to this Mantra 102. Uh, then they have their metal frame, uh, metal uh, laminate underfoot here. Uh, it extends into the frame, so it's a more cohesive unit. 
uh, with an articulated kind of slit at the front and the back here, uh, just kind of giving you a little bit more playfulness, uh, you know, and being able to adjust the, you know, the stiffness, both torsional and uh, longitudinal of the ski. So it's a nice, you know, that's kind of that secondary plate. There is a break here, kind of where my, my fingers are. Uh, and that allows for a more natural flex of the ski. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool way that they build this thing. You know, again, like you said, it's not a, a vast change. You yeah. know, it's not a wholesale change like Ranger 102 to Ranger, sure. you know, right. 102. A whole new ski. Yeah, a whole new ski. It's, right. it's very much the same, uh, just with some, some updates that make it a little bit friendlier. I recall um, sitting and chatting with vocal engineers in Sun Valley and like this change to like how the kind of two different applications of metal interact with each other is like pretty subtle and not something that you're going to see in a lot of marketing material like yeah. no one from vocal is going to like they were not like they're not highlighting this subtle change right here but speaking with the engineers it's pretty important right like they are really excited about kind of what they think is, is really like nailing this portion of the ski. Right. And I think you, it does come across in, in how it feels too. Totally. Um, I think a bunch of things, a bunch of things kind of add up with this ski to, to change its feel while it's still looking basically like the same ski. Yep. Um, and then just to quickly touch on shape, um, a shape might even be more similar than the previous ski. Right. I don't think there's any difference in the rocker camber profile. Um, if there is, it's, you it's can't pick, it, can't pick yeah. it up with the human no. eye. Um, so really with this ski, what we're looking at is a slight change to the side cut dimensions and the resulting turn radius. And that's basically exactly what happened with the Kendo 88 right. too. So this ski has, let's see, 142, 102, 124 dimensions. That's bumping up the tip and tail dimensions by what, two millimeters? Two up here to, and one in the one back. In the, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the resulting change to radius is basically we're dropping one meter out of the central radius. These, as a reminder, use 3D radius. In fact, this was one of the first vocal skis to receive 3D radius, yeah. kind of one of the, the originals. Um, so we get, this 177 now has an 18 meter turn radius underfoot. And then what's interesting is in the tips and tails, the radius has extended. So it's, it's kind of cool how they're like straightening the ski through this portion and then tightening it up underfoot. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. just dropping down the widest part a little bit, getting, you know, just a slight increase in the taper, you know, downsizing that taper a little bit. It, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's really interesting. I like to think of, uh, like to think of it as like really tight through there and then like running straighter, yeah. which makes sense that you would res like you would achieve a slightly wider tip by right. running straighter out of a tighter radius underfoot. Yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah. And it's turnier. Like you can definitely tell. 100%. The same as with the Kendo. Yep. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I really... Like I said, it was really fun for me to kind of go back and watch some of that footage from Sun Valley. That was my first introduction to the ski, the first time I saw it on snow. Very first, like, interaction with it, I wasn't even skiing it. I got to follow Gordy. Um, it was like we did a warm-up run on a groomer, and then, like, right away, there was a bunch of soft snow, a bunch of fresh yeah. soft snow, and we were all kind of like, what are we doing skiing groomers? Right. So we did that right away, and... I definitely remember following him and thinking that ski looks a little bit quicker and a little bit easier in that terrain. You know, I, at least my opinion, is the previous Mantra 102 was a bit of a handful, especially kind of when you got off of a groomer and needed to like throw it sideways and right. stuff like that. It's a pretty heavy ski and, and very grippy too. Um, but from what I could see following Gordy on those first runs, he was he was getting it to maneuver pretty easily. And then I got on it later that day and just like totally confirmed all of my yeah. thoughts when following Gordy. So I thought that was really cool. I'm interested to get your opinion on it too. You know, you, you actually skied it more than I did back here in right. Vermont. Um, so, so curious on your take. But 
I give a lot of credit to them extending the tip and tail radius compared to the previous ski. Yeah. Like we, we talk about this concept, there's a few different ways to make edge release easier, increase rocker or increase radius in the tips and tails. A ski that's very straight isn't going to, it's going to release more easily than a ski with like a ton of side cut sure. through the tips and tails. So that's something that I really felt is as you get the, the edge to release, it does so more smoothly. Um, and then the afternoon of our first day in Sun Valley, we did a little like mini photo shoot. Um, and one skier was on the Kendo 88. I was on this Mantra 102. And we were setting up like a bunch of carving shots. Yep. And going into that, I was like, this isn't fair. I want to be on the Kendo. Right. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to like make the turn I want to make for the camera, considering that we were like kind of focusing on the Kendo and like right. setting up shots for the Kendo. Um, and I was really pleasantly surprised, you know, dropping one meter out of the, out of the central radius. It does come across the fall line a little more easily. Yeah. It's still a pretty hefty ski, one that requires some significant skier input. I wouldn't put an intermediate on this still. But I think an advanced expert skier um, can manipulate it and get it to do the things that they want to more easily. Yeah, and I think that comes through really well in that Gordy footage. Yeah, I think more so than than me skiing it. You sure. know, I kind of felt like I was a little bit more relaxed on it, which I can afford to be with my size. Yeah, but like he was getting such amazing energy out of the ski. Yeah, and he's and like I, a small guy. Yeah, and I couldn't help but think though that like at a place like Sun Valley. Like, how long is that going to last? Is that a sustainable way of skiing? And for someone who's like fit and aggressive, like, yeah, yeah but you're doing 3,000 vertical feet on a Mantra 102 in heavy snow, like, and he was making like, you know, dynamic turns. Yep. So is that sustainable? Is it sustainable for most skiers? Like, for an eight hour day? Right. Yeah, that's kind know, of, that, that's what yeah, popped into my mind. And I'm like, at some point you just got to stand on this thing and let it, and let, let it do it what, it, what it wants to do. Yep. And that's where I found the most fun. And we got it, got on it when Vocal was here. And I remember it was like foggy in the morning and then just started dumping snow. And like not very pleasant snow. It was pretty, pretty heavy. Heavy, yeah. Um, but it was soft. And this thing just went, I mean, you couldn't tell that the snow was of a subpar quality. Right. You know, that's like a huge benefit of having this ski with this heft. Um, you know, 2,200 grams, we had it on the scale earlier. Uh, it definitely just plows right through whatever's in front of it. So whether you're on that groomer, that corduroy, or in, yeah. you know, manky heavy snow, uh, it basically feels the same. Yeah, they didn't so take impressive. that characteristic away from it. Nope, not at all. It still has yeah. that knife-like, it's going to just cut through things. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of like, you know, on the other end, if you're... A lot of people that are shopping for over 100 millimeter skis want some type of powder capability. Uh, and th these kind of stay on the bottom. You know, they're not, you can find right. much floatier 100 millimeter, Abs 102 millimeter absolutely. skis. You know, that's not the whole idea here. The whole, you know, the main idea is that these can do that variable conditions and terrain and just, and ski on a groomer like a kendo. Yeah. So it just gives you that wider footprint, that extra surface area. Uh, and with that, you get the resulting stability. I mean, it's just so smooth and powerful. It's still, the highlighting characteristics are still strength, precision, yeah. stuff like that. You know, it, 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 you got to put like an asterisk or like a little note with like powder performance right. or, or even that, that footage of Gordy. Like he's a phenomenal skier. And like, will everybody have that same experience on them? No. Yeah. You know, I think that does come down to ability level. Did they make it easier in those situations? Yes. Yeah, totally. It's still just yep. important to remember that, like, if you skied it back to back with a Revolt 104 in powder, you would be like, oh, yeah, that Revolt's a right. lot easier to ski. But then you, you lose out on all the precision and, and right. dynamic carving performance of this ski. Yeah, same thing with bumps and trees. I mean, you know, in terms of trees like the wider the better you know right. the, the more space you have the less you have to manipulate this thing to get it to do what you want to do in subsequent turns right i think the happier 
you'll be overall. But, right. you know, I, again, people aren't buying this for mogul and tree performance. They're buying it for wider open zones, higher speeds, more yep. aggressive ski. Yeah, and if you want that performance in a ski that's over 100 underfoot, this yep. is easily one of the best options. Yeah, totally. Like, there aren't even many companies that are, like, willing to build this. Sure. Like, what, yeah. are, what are the comparisons? I don't know. Stance 102? Yeah. But the Stance 102 has so much more tail rocker yeah. that it becomes a lot surfier. This is way more precise. Yeah. It's an interesting animal. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, you know, Enforcer 100, it's kind of the same thing as... Right, you can put that in the your, same conversation, but yeah. this is still more precise. Yes. It, yeah. It's yeah. right at like the top. The top of that category <laughs> yeah. in, in terms of precision. Yeah, sure. and, and thankfully there's something like this out there because there's a lot of skiers that want that. You know? Right. You, like, it doesn't matter. You get it on a firm day here in Vermont, and this thing works just as well. Right. You know, it's, it's, an, it's an impressive ski, you know, whether it's this or wind-blown snow out in Colorado. You know, right. it's going to, that's my biggest takeaway is that it performs the same no matter where it is. It's unflappable. Right. Yep. Would I recommend it to an intermediate? No. No. Never. It would have to be a large intermediate that prefers a very stable ski, and I would downsize them. Yeah. But that's it. And, like, a large intermediate, all of the things that you <laughs> just said, and also, like, the, the willingness or acceptance that you might struggle a little bit. Yeah. There, I and like that that, that term, customer yeah. exists. Yeah. You know, I've had conversations with people where they're like, I know this is too much for me, and I know I'm, it might be tough, but yeah. I want to do it anyways. And I'm kind of like, Great. That's yeah. your decision for sure. Um, I don't think we really touched when I was talking about off-piece performance and that Gordy skiing and my own experience in Sun Valley on it. I really focused a lot on the change to the radius. Um, but I do think the, you know, we, and we mentioned weight too. I do think there's something to be said about them reducing swing weight. Sure. I think there is between the lower swing weight and the longer radius and the tips and tails, I think you, you do, that's, you have to kind of combine those two things, and that's where the, the off-piece performance has been boosted a little bit. Yeah. And, and when I say off-piece performance, I mean off-piece, like, maneuverability. Right. Because you could go the other side of the spectrum in terms of off-piece, just, like, ripping big, giant, sweeping arcs. Yeah. And that, it still does that great, too. And just remarkably consistent from 88 to 96 to 102, that, that Vocal has this lineup here that has just a yes. very consistent feel to it. Yep. You know, the, like if you get on a kendo and then a mantra and then this, you will notice so many similarities in yep. the overall character and personality of the ski. Yep. So if you've been a mantra or a kendo skier in the past and want something very similar, you don't have to use your imagination too hard to think about what this is going to be like. It's pretty, they're pretty clear cut and straightforward. Absolutely. Um, last thing I'm going to do, because I don't think we did this to start the video. That's a stiff one. Yeah. That's all, all 160 pounds <laughs> and all my upper body strength. Ugh. There, I got a little crack out of the, yeah, out of out the of fiberglass the, on that one. Um, yeah, it's a stiff ski. Yeah. It's, but it's, that's what it's supposed to be. Yep. Stiff um, and heavy and burly and strong. And, but... They've done a great job making it more agile yep. and more responsive. You know, yep. that was the big, that was the big uh, improvement, I think, is the yeah. agility and the responsiveness. Yeah, if you, and if you can take an existing ski and retain all of its benefits, all of its positive attributes, yeah. and improve upon the things that were potentially discussed as downsides, you've done a great job. Yeah. You know, you don't want to, like, completely change a ski and lose its personality, and they didn't do that here. They just... No. Made the bad stuff better. <laughs> yeah. And I would be like, I would have a hard time imagining someone making a case that the previous version is better or stronger than this. You know, yeah. Just, How I, could you? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I certainly didn't feel that yeah. ever. Um, no, it's a really cool ski. Yeah. Um, so let us know if you have any questions. Um, Hopefully you do. I think it's a cool ski to talk about. I think what Vocal's doing right now is a, is a really fun conversation. Yeah. They've got a lot of cool technology in their skis. You can tell that like they're, there's a little bit more to their engineering process than some other manufacturers. And 
Yeah, you can tell that they think about it. Totally. Yep. Maybe they overthink it. <laughs> I don't think so. But they do have that German mentality, right. and, and I got to experience that firsthand, kind yeah. of talking one-on-one -on -one with their with their engineers. Yeah, it's, it's a just, great experience. Yeah, you think like you and I like talking about skis. Right. Boy, sit down with a vocal engineer, and <laughs> they'll talk your ear off. That's a different animal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let us know if you have any questions about it, and we'll see you out there on the hill. Bye.